This video is going to walk through the second part of problem one. There's a lot of similarities with the first Ferris wheel problem that I gave you guys. Uh, this one has a few things that make it a little different, um, but uh, the process is very similar after the first step. So this time we're given the same Ferris wheel, the same 492 feet, it's 50 feet off the ground. But you'll notice on this trip around, we went 39 degrees, then 129 feet in the arc, then 1.3 radians, and then finally 0.29 revolutions. So instead of just two angles being added together, we actually have four here. But we want to go through the sort of same process. If I turn all of these into radians, I can then add them together and get sort of a single unified measure. Now, I can do each one sort of separately. Uh, and thinking that through, I have 36 degrees, so that's 36 out of 360. That's the sort of percentage of the circle I have. And I need that fraction of the two pi radians. All right, that measure's been converted into radians. Then I have 129 feet in the arc. So this is an arc length. And remember, we can take our arc length, the 129 feet, divide it by the radius length, the 246 that we found earlier. And that gets us our value of the angle that cut off the arc measured in radians. The next measure is already given to us in radians, so that's 1.3 radians. And last but not least, we did this on the previous problem, but I'm just going to show out the steps again. I have 29.29 or 29 hundredths of a revolution, so basically 29% of our circle. And so that would be oops, 0 0.29 times 2 pi, and now I have a measure within radians. And you might be going, why did I write these sort of like this? Well, I want to know the total angle measured in radians. So basically, I want this first angle measure added to my next angle measure, added to the next one, and added to that last one. And so what I'm trying to do to maybe save myself a little bit of time, instead of doing four separate calculations, I'm going to just put them all into my calculator at once. And that way then I can just create one value for my angle. We'll call this angle A. And when you're doing variables in Desmos, make sure you've cleared out your old work before you start reassigning variables. And I'm going to just start typing these. So I got 36 divided by 360 um, times 2 pi. And that's got added to our arc length divided by our radius measure. That got added to the 1.3 radians, which got added to the 0 0.29 times 2 pi. And I get a total angle of about 4.27 radians. Okay, now let's draw a picture. So let's take our circle. We got our Ferris wheel. Um, it's... 50 feet off the ground. It has a radius of 246 feet. Make that 46 look a little better. And we've now gone approximately 4.27 radians. Well, halfway, so if I'm moving clockwise, halfway would be about 3.14, about three. Um, three quarters would be about 4.5, so we're a little less than that. So I would guess, you know, the rider's right around there. Um, this right here would be my angle A. Now, remember, just like before, we're determining the height from the ground. So that means in the end, I'm looking for this total distance. And just like before, we know the 50 feet off the ground, and we know that radius there, but it's this sort of middle piece here that we're missing. So we're going to call that H. In order to find H, I can use sine, which gives us a vertical distance. But to use sine, I need another angle measure. And so I'm going to need the angle from the 3 o'clock position to where my terminal ray fell. And so we're going to call this angle B. Now, just like before, remember 3 quarters of our circle was 3 pi over 2. And so 
to figure out angle B, I can take 3 pi over 2 radians and subtract out the 4.27 that we've traveled. Oops, let's get the right number. Minus, and it's A in Desmos. And I get that this, this smaller angle is only about 43 hundredths radians. And I'm going to go in and add a variable here so that I can pull it for my next part. Now that I have the angle measure, we're sort of following the same path we followed on the previous question. I'm going to use sine to figure out h. So h is equal to the radius, because our circle is not a unit circle, sine of our angle. And so h equals 246 times sine of angle B. Oops, there's extra there. I don't want that extra. Take it out, take it out. And I get a height of around 104.23 feet. And just doing a little bit of thinking here, this number is smaller than the height we got over here. And that makes sense because we didn't go quite as far around on the previous problem. We were a little higher up in the air. This time we went a little further, so we're a little lower. We're a little closer to the ground. Now, this is not our final answer. We still need to take this 104.23 and add it to the 246 and the 50 feet that were sort of the radius and that, you know, this lower piece of our circle. So back to my calculator h plus 246 plus 50 and I get that this particular rider is around 400.24 feet off the ground. Hopefully both of these videos help you better understand how to approach uh, Ferris, some Ferris wheel problems where I start with sort of the pieces of the circle and try and find the height um, above the ground.